Hey, this is John Leslie, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up Favro for game development. We'll take a look at ideal feature and art collections, allowing squads to work the way they choose, a game dashboard collection providing overview and alignment for the whole development team, and a studio portfolio collection showing real-time progress of multiple game titles and driving studio business initiatives. Effectively, I'm going to show you how to run your entire studio in Favro. Along the way, I'll also be highlighting some of the features from the new All Teams expansion. The first thing you'll notice in the new release is this new left navigation panel. With all of your collections clearly listed, anytime a change has been made to a collection since you last logged in, you'll clearly see that collection highlighted. you also see at a glance exactly how many changes have been made since you last logged in to those collections. When you click on the collection, it will be clear exactly which items have changed since you last logged in. Let's begin with a team level collection, an art team working on one of your game titles. A collection is simply an aggregation of boards and backlogs, lists everything that the team set up how the team needs it to do what they need to do. We'll open up their backlog or art asset list and we can see we have this nice hierarchy of character assets, environment assets, weapons, outsource art, however you choose to set it up. Uh, we're also looking at the new sheets view. So in this view, which essentially looks like a spreadsheet, you have the ability to add custom fields specific to this sheet or to this list. You also have the ability to sort any one of these fields. and to edit the fields directly in line, like so. Okay, let's add a new asset to the character list. If I click on this new asset, it brings up the card pop-up, which represents the asset, where I have the ability to add tags, I can assign it to members. I can add checklists. I could add images. And as the art asset eventually progresses through the creation pipeline, team members are able to add comments directly to the card representing the asset. Okay, now I'll show you how this team will actually produce these art assets. We'll open up this team's Kanban board. They've chose to work in a Kanban flow-based way. When they're ready to work on a particular art asset, they'd simply drag it from the backlog or the art asset list into the team Kanban board. You can see that this team has activated whip limits to help control the flow. Once concept sketch is completed, an illustrator can pull it in to the illustration stage. I'll close the backlog to give us a little more room on the screen. Eventually it'll be pulled into modeling and texturing. You can see that we have built into this some workflow rules. So for example, uh, nobody's allowed to skip the art director review and go directly to ready and delivered. So once it's pulled into Art Director Review, it automatically assigns the Art Director. It also automatically tagged it through the workflow rules with an Art Review tag. And eventually it'll get pulled into, once it passes the Art Director Review, into Ready and Delivered, where it's automatically tagged as done. Also new in the All Teams expansion is this three-way board toggle. So here we're looking at the Kanban View toggle. We also have a sheets board view where you can see progress in a different way with these status fields. And we also have a brand new roadmap view where you can see these art assets in this example on a timeline. In the timeline view, you're able to change the dates simply by dragging and dropping like this. And you even have the ability to add new cards just by clicking anywhere on the timeline. Okay, so that's one example of a team level collection. Now let me quickly show you a feature team collection. 
This team, instead of an art asset list, they're working out of a game feature backlog, again, hierarchically structured any way they choose. To commit to, in this case, a scrum board, they'll just drag and drop out of the backlog onto the scrum board and move it through its various stages, similar to the art team, eventually through to deployed and live. Built into the boards, as well as the three-way toggle, there are also charts and graphs. Burn down chart in this case for a scrum team, where they can see, are they tracking towards completing the work they committed to in this sprint on time or not? In this case, it looks like they are a little ahead of schedule. All right, now moving up a level in the organization to the entire game team, teams of teams, everybody working on this particular title, we have a dashboard for this game. So a dashboard in this case, we have a handy built-in dashboard builder. This is, again, an aggregation of all the boards, all the backlogs, all the lists, everything necessary for all the teams to create this entire game, to create this entire title. So we have a feature backlog in this example, an art asset list, the tools team backlog, a levels backlog, a progression backlog. Uh, we have a roadmap for the game, and we also have all the boards for all the various teams. Now these boards and backlogs are, are live, so as cards move at the team level, you'll see them moving in real time and being updated in real time here on the entire game dashboard level as well. Now in this roadmap that I want to show you, when we use the card toggle here, first in this kind of Kanban board view, we've just broken it down into the various releases where the cards sit within those releases. But if we toggle to the Sheets view, you can see where you can do some cool stuff here, like add target Metacritic. You'll see the estimation in line with the actual assets, with the actual features. They're tagged as such. You can see relations, so you can see exactly where each one of these things currently lives within production on the various boards and backlogs. You can see who they're assigned to. They can be assigned to groups. They can be assigned to individuals. Uh, some priority tags here, some release tags here, and then an overall status for each one of the features and assets. And then if we switch it to the roadmap view, the roadmap board setting, now you can see all the features and assets for this entire game when they're expected to be produced and also released. Okay, so this is an example of a single games dashboard. Again, it's all of the boards, all of the backlogs for a single game title. So this is a perfect place, one-stop shop for producers, exec producers, game development directors, anybody responsible for the overall title or teams of teams. Now let's bring it up to the top of the studio where I have a sample game studio dashboard. Now here is where you're gonna be driving the actual business of making games. So you'll have a game studio backlog. You might have also uh, the feature backlogs of games currently in development, portfolio of licensing or publishing. Uh, you'll have your Game Studio Roadmap, a Game Studio Kanban, which is going to be fed by this Game Studio backlog. You can see we have it broken down by future development, maybe some new IPs that we're researching, current development, publishing, licensing, recruiting facilities. Again, everything, all the initiatives to actually run the business of making games in this backlog. Now that would typically be feeding a portfolio Kanban, this game studio Kanban, where you'd simply take in a new initiative, say this new action IP, it's gonna move through its own flow. So you're able to see the high level business initiatives in progress, eventually moving through to analysis, figure out what the budget's going to be, eventually to in progress, where you can break this down to its own backlog send that to a pre-production collection to start working on this new action uh, intellectual property. Now also in the studio level dashboard, we have an example of a game studio roadmap where you can see on a timeline, uh, all of our games that are currently in development, their production timelines, the DLC production timelines, when those are going to be released, any new IP that's going to be worked on, so on and so forth. So in summary, we've looked at the game studio level running the entire business of making games. We also looked at the actual game IP or title level, a dashboard of, of all the teams, their backlogs, boards, a game roadmap. 
and then taking it down to the team level, art teams, feature teams, the people actually making the games, the people creating the games themselves. Now everything can be linked from level to level, so you have full traceability from the studio level down to the team level and vice versa. Thanks and good luck with Fabro.